cool. All right, guys. So good morning. Uh, here we are, at Calaveras Lake, uh, doing some uh, some jug fishing with Steve today. So we were on the 210 site. Uh, it's a fishing forum for San Antonio, and a couple people have been asking what are jugs and you know how do we use them? What do we do? So we're going to show you uh, three different jugs that we kind of use here at the lake, uh, and hopefully talk about some pros and cons about the different jugs that we use. But uh, we'll kind of just get, get right into it. So basically i guess all a jug is it's a it's a free floating device that you can use and you can put some hooks on there and primarily you can only use it for catfish um, if ever you're using a jug and you catch any kind of sport fish like a redfish or stripers or bass or bass yeah you can't keep those you got to throw them back but i mean if you're looking to fill your freezer with some catfish or you're looking to do a, a good fish fry um, this is a good technique to use to to load up on a lot of fish so usually I have three different types of jugs that I use uh, depending on what parts of the lake that, that I'm going to be fishing at. So the first one I'll kind of show you, it's uh, what we call a deep water jug. So all we use here, it's just, a, it's just a Clorox bottle. And what we have on this one is we have about 40 feet of line. So basically we're dropping this jug in about 40 feet of water. Um, pretty good jug for the deep water just because it's a lot bigger. Um, if you happen to get some big catfish on here, uh, it's, it's going to be real hard for them to pull this guy down. Um, the pros on this is you can get some more hooks on, on this jug set. You need to keep in mind though that on any jugs you set, regardless of depth, you can't have more than five hooks per jug. Uh, some other things you need to remember when you do set out jugs, you always got to have your, your address, your phone number, your name, and somehow you got to get the, the date that you release the jug. So the dates obviously change a lot or often. So all I do is, is just a brown packing tape and I'll write the, the date on there, just wrap it around the handle. And it holds real good for the one day that it's gonna be sitting out here. But for the deep jugs, what I end up doing, I just go to Academy and I actually will buy a trot line. And that trot line, I buy 150 feet and I'll cut it down to about anywhere between 40 and 42 feet. And I like these uh, using these trot lines because they already have the they already have the beads and they already have the swivels. And they usually come with uh, some trot line clips, but then if not, you can just buy some trot line clips. And I got some over here. So I don't ever tie my lines directly straight to the jug, just so when you catch a catfish, you know, you wanna be able to get that fish off real quick. So that's where these trot lines come in real handy. So the trot line clip, hopefully you can see, just a clip that opens and closes. All you gotta do, just put it on the swivel, you bait it, and then throw it in the water. And when you get a fish, usually what I do is I'll just, I'll grab the swivel in, pop it back off, and I'll haul the fish back onto the boat. Real quick, real easy. So again, the good thing about this jug is that you can use a lot longer line, and the fish probably will not take this jug anywhere in the lake. You need to make sure you try and anchor it uh, with some sort of weight. All I usually end up using, I got a five pound dumbbell with just some line. And you'll notice on the end of my jug or my, the end of my trot line, I have another trot line clip. So all I do is just, I just snap it on and dump it in the water. Uh, you don't have to do this if you want, you can just tie the line straight to the, to the weight. I do this so this way at the end of my trip, I can just take these apart, put the dumbbell away and I can just put the jug away. The downside to this jug that I think is that, as you can see, is very, very cumbersome. It's very big. Uh, imagine having 20 of these in your boat. It's going to take up a lot of space, a lot of room. So I usually only carry about four of these. And if ever I drop these, I'll just drop four of these in the water and that's about it. So uh, yeah, so this is one jug that I like using, but this I, I would like to call my deep water jug, so it's about 40 feet of water. Another one I like using, this one is a, a noodle jug. If you go, if you look it up like on YouTube or if you even type it in for a Google search, uh, if you type in self flagging jug, you'll probably come across this jug. Basically all it is, it's a uh, PVC pipe and I believe it's a half inch and uh, it's probably about, I don't know, maybe close to two feet long. Get yourself some pool noodle floats. Um, this one I actually ordered online because I like white. Um, State law used to be in the past that it had to be white, but they did change that recently to where it could be any color but orange. Orange is used to signify uh, commercial fishing. But I still like using the white. But yeah, so it's just a PVC pipe, a pool noodle float, 
look, you can look up the schematics, like I said, on Google. Just type in uh, self-flagging jugs and you'll come across this. So on this jug, what I do, it's about 20 feet, probably about 20 feet of line. And on the bottom, I have a one pound, this is a one pound duck weight. So I just have a one pound weight. This is gonna help keep this noodle in, in place. Uh, I've caught a lot of catfish up to 10 pounds that even like this, it doesn't take the, the jug anywhere. Now on this one, I'm not buying a trout line. This one, I'm actually just getting some, some twine. I'm measuring out about 20 feet. And usually what I do is probably about close to three feet from the bottom. I'll just put a little, a little knot, put two beads, and I just put a swivel. And then about another, I wanna say five feet, and I put a secondary secondary swivel. So on these jugs, I usually only do two, two hooks per jug. Uh, I don't want to put any more on these because I don't want to be messing with a lot of fish. Um, same thing as before, and the reason I use white is you need to put your information on there. So still got your name, your address, telephone number, and again, that packing tape, just put the date and just wrap it around the top and it, it holds pretty well. So these jugs I'll drop in about 20 feet, and like I said, they, they hold pretty well. So uh, the good thing about these jugs is you can put a lot of them on your boat. I have a, a milk crate that I use to store these and I can get about 18 of these noodles in just one milk crate. You know, and so as you know, a milk crate is just a one by one square. So it it's, uh, doesn't take up a lot of room, but you can hold a lot of jugs. The downside of this jug is that if you do happen to get a good sized fish, uh, kiss your, good, your jug goodbye. Uh, it's gonna be gone. Um, especially if that fish takes it into deep water. Uh, I have lost a couple of jugs that way, probably got a big fish. Uh, have had some of my friends call me a couple of days later saying that they found the jug with a 20 pound catfish. So yeah, if you get a big fish on this sucker, uh, you're gonna lose it. Unless you happen to notice it real quick and then you can probably chase it down on your boat. But yeah, if you drop it off, leave it, go do some fishing, come back. And if you drop 10 and you can only count nine, well, chances are a fish took one of them. So still another good jug, like I said, in, in about 20 feet of water. The last jug that I use, this one is not anchored. So I call this one a uh, like a free floating jug. It's still the same format. Uh, the, the noodle on the end, I probably cut it a little bit shorter. Still have your name info, your date. You still gotta put it on there. The only difference on this one, like I said, there's no weight. The only real weight I have on there is a maybe a quarter ounce egg weight. And this one only has one hook. So usually all I do is just have the one swivel on the end. And so this bait is gonna be floating off the, the bottom. This one I'll probably put in about maybe 12 feet of water. Uh, this line is about 10 feet long. Um, biggest drawback on this one is that if you are gonna drop this anywhere, keep it in sight. Don't, don't drop this and go fish somewhere else in the lake and come back. Since there is no weight on this, any fish that grabs this is gonna swim off with it. Uh, so you wanna keep that one pretty close, pretty nearby. Um, Usually when I use those, I'll anchor up somewhere in shallow water and I'll drop these, uh, depending on which way the current or the wind's blowing, I'll drop, uh, I'll drop them and then I'll anchor up downwind. So this way the noodle will be basically pushing its way towards me. And if I happen to see it take off and start swimming in the opposite direction, well then I know it's got a fish and then I'll you know, typically you know, pick up my anchors and I'll, I'll go pick up the fish. Um, these are just fun for chasing around the lake. Um, it, it, it makes it real good, especially when I'm out here with my daughter and, you know, we'll be fishing and then we just see, hey, there goes a jug and it just, you know, takes off. So it, it makes for it makes for a lot of fun. I don't drop a lot of those guys out here. If anything, I, I think I only carry four in my boat. Um, sometimes I'll drop two, three, maybe sometimes I'll drop four, but not a whole lot. Because like I said, the, the biggest drawback on that is that it will go swimming. I mean, you can get a two pound catfish and it's gonna take off with it. So uh, like I said, it's more just for fun than anything else. Um, like I said, as far as the, the the swivels or the trot line clips, like I said, they, they sell the trot line clips. All you gotta do is just put yourself a good swivel. I usually use the same kind of heavy duty twine to just get my hook. I always use circle hooks, they work real, real good. Uh, typically on the real deep jugs that are 40 feet, I will use an eight odd hook. And on the shallower ones, I'll use a six odd hook and they work pretty well. Uh, now, as far as bait, bait of choice, I know Steven's mentioned it, I mentioned it. I know when I was first told about it by my buddy Scott, he said chicken breasts. And I looked at him like, you're crazy. But yeah, guys, <laughs> chicken breasts, just cubes. 
we just get chicken breast we cut into good sized cubes good sized chunks and that's all that we use no more sting bait no more cast nets yeah no no, no to cut up shad or anything it's just ready ready to go right out of the bag yeah i mean no like we're talking about we're, we don't throw the net we don't have to get cut bait we're not getting shad we're not cutting it up we're not getting all dirty uh especially in the winter months uh when you're dropping some of these jugs when it's freezing last thing you want to be doing is throwing a net getting cold getting your hands cold and still having to cut up the bait um we don't even put anything on it i know some guys have mentioned that you know well what do you put any kind of seasonings or anything and like steven said it's just right out of the bag i mean so it's just chicken breast cut it up works wonders um so yeah so that's basically i think all there is as far as the different jugs we use uh do you use anything else no that's that's really uh the only jugs i've ever used yeah you, you can you can use all the swivels or if you don't want to go buy all the swivels and all the little parts you can you can tie little loops in there and run a hook on them it, it adds more tangles sometimes uh, this is definitely the most efficient way as far as keeping it not having tangles or anything like that in there um, yeah and, and you know just measure your line know how deep the water you're gonna fish uh, I use the jugs for fish finders most of the time it's hard to f find a catfish on a on, on a fish finder so I use a um, put six seven jugs out in a cove or in a certain area try to fish around them a little bit and when the jugs start going then you know there's fish there and then you can either pick them up and keep fishing or uh you know just keep running your jugs but they're the great fish finders yeah so these are like we said guys these are pretty good so uh i mean hopefully this was informative now granted you don't have to use a chicken breast i mean if, if you're if you're sold on using cut bait um yeah get yourself some shad perch tilapia cut it up um, still use the heads I mean the heads still work uh, when I used to use cut bait for the jugs the shads and the perch I'll just the, the heads I'll put a hook right through the ice and uh, it holds pretty well it's just a lot more time consuming having to you know find the bait cut the bait you know it just takes a little bit more time the, the chicken breast like I said now you know you just go to the store you buy it, it's ready to go don't have to do anything with it so uh, yeah so hope, hope you guys enjoyed the videos just please rem remember if you do drop the jugs just make sure you put all your information on there if you know a game warden does happen to stop by he will check for the information he will check again for your name for your the your address your telephone number and especially the date that you put the jugs out um, i believe texas parks and wildlife says the date is good for up to 15 days after you write it um, i usually don't take that chance um, i'm only at the lake about once twice a week anyway so every time i come out i just take off the old date and i just, I just put a new date on there uh, i don't i just don't, don't want to take any chances and it doesn't take very long guys uh, the, the date part it may take a couple seconds per jug it's, it's not that big a deal but it's worth not having to get a fine and i'm not sure what the fine is but i heard it, it is pretty hefty and on top of the fine they will confiscate your jugs so just uh like i said just follow the rules and uh you'll be okay so uh looks like it's starting to rain uh so we'll, we're gonna get off this uh, camera real quick so yeah we're gonna drop a couple more jugs i think we're only dropping uh, some deep ones today we're not going to mess with the shallower ones. Uh, we're actually going to try and uh, do some down rigging. Uh, not a big fan of down rigging, but we're just going to try it out and just kind of see how we do today. They're not, they're not buying at the wall either. So Yeah, the wall the wall's <laughs> pretty much a bust. We got out here at 6 a.m. and uh, nothing was biting at the wall whatsoever. So, yeah, we figured we'll just drop some jugs, practice on the down rigging for a bit, and just kind of see how we do. So, cool. Thanks. Hope you enjoyed it. And, yeah, I'll get my daughter on there. <laughs> all right guys checking our jugs probably let them sit in the water longer than we should we probably want to be checking them about every maybe every hour but uh we'll see if we got anything we're just doing one turn Oh. <laughs> <laughs> if he runs, you gotta let go of the line. Okay? Yeah. Let's even grab that one. Can I grab that guy too? All right, guys. Look at we got a nice size blue.
I got this. Yeah, I'm gonna, I'm gonna go. All right, guys. Pretty good blue, about 12 pounds. Real nice. And get a quick picture and get him back in the water. All right, guys. Real nice fish. It's gonna go back in. Oh shit! Holy crap! There's your big picture. Okay, yeah, let him do wherever he runs. Woo! All right, guys. This one's gonna be serious. <laughs> this is a, uh, it's a real good. I got this latch around my here. Uh, just wrap that around here. And we'll stop it right there. It may go down, that's fine. Oh my god. That thing is easy. Are you guys ready? Oh, <laughs> Alright guys, so yeah, jug fishing. <laughs> Pretty good. Twenty-seven and a half pounds, guys. It's a real nice blue. Definitely Alright guys, hopefully you can hear us. Uh, going to try and revive him for a little bit. He's already kicking pretty good. But yeah, 27, 27 and a half pound blue. And to think we were trolling the whole time. I know, right? <laughs> we should have been catfishing. 
Big blues are buying today for sure. Pretty good blue on that one, guys. We'll see if there's any more on here. Okay, you're thinking crazy about the chicken breast. Yeah. <laughs> and guys, you think that was on a piece of chicken breast like that big? He pooped on me. All right, guys, so we only checked our jugs once. Didn't get a lot of uh, quantity, uh, but like I said, you usually want to check your jugs. You usually want to check your jugs probably about every hour. Don't let them sit any longer than that. I think had we been checking them every hour, we had a lot of hooks that were baitless. Probably would have caught a lot more, uh, not a lot more blues. But I mean, we weren't we weren't going to keep any today anyways. But yeah, we got some pretty good ones. Think what 12, 12 pound rate? 12 pounds. First one, 12 pounds, 27 and a half pounds. Those obviously I would throw back anyways. Uh, Steven would toss those back anyways. This would be a good eater, but uh, we're not keeping anything today. So yeah, pretty good guys. So uh, hopefully you like this video. Uh, obviously jugs do produce. Uh, around the jugs was 40 pounds of fish. Yeah, about 40 pounds guys. So do recommend though, if you do guys get anything over 10 pounds, please CPR, catch, photo, release. Toss them back. They're the good breeders. But I uh, hope you hope you enjoyed the video. I'm gonna say bye for now. Goodbye. See you on the next trip. See you on the next trip.